Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Well, there's no such thing as a generic psalm, but the psalm we're about to share together uh, has a no attribution as to who the author is. We don't know what the occasion was. Uh, the content of the psalm is just generally praise. And so if, if there were such a thing as a generic psalm, this would be a generic psalm. It's a psalm of praise. And um, we don't know when it was written, but we do know why it was written. It was written to praise Yahweh, the God of Israel. And it's about our praise for the Lord and the Lord's faithfulness to those who love him and so forth. So let's read now Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all that he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all of the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart throughout all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all of mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on the earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything that they do. No king is saved by the size of his army, and no warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all of its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love to deliver them from death, and to keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. So it opens with a call for worship and just continues in a track of worship all along, but the first few verses are explicitly a call to worship the Lord. Verse 1, sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. And so in the congregation of Israel, whether it was in the tabernacle of David or the tabernacle of Moses, or perhaps the rebuilt Zerubbabel's tabernacle, whenever this was composed, it was sung in the presence of the Lord. And the the people of God played instruments and sang and accompanied it skillfully with shouts of joy. I think it's um, a magnificent psalm, even though we don't know a lot of the details about it. We can certainly catch the flavor of it. And then the psalmist extols the virtues of God's word. After he exhorts us to to praise Yahweh, he extols the virtues of God's word. He says, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all that he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. And amen. We agree with all of that. And then he personifies God's word and links it to the creation narrative just like is what is done with Jesus in the New Testament. Verse 6, 
of uh, Psalm 33. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars and puts them into storehouses. And so this expression, by the word of the Lord, the heavens are made. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Here, the psalmist writes, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. John, the gospel writer, penned, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. And then John continues with the creation narrative. So the the Old Testament and the New Testament agree. John explains that this word the psalmist is talking about, who um, uh, made the heavens and the earth, was Jesus. And so that's uh, revealed to us explicitly in the New Testament and prophetically alluded to here in Psalm 33. Continuing with our psalm, verse 8, Let all of the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. Once again, that's a, a reference to the creation narrative. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. So he's contrasting human plans with God's plans. And God's plans are immovable. Verse 12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And we say amen to that. And Lord, we ask that our nation uh, would be yours and that you would be our God over our nation. The psalmist then pins that the Lord rules far above every nation, far above every human authority. Verse 13, from heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all of mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on the earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything that they do. Nothing is saved by the size of an army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, despite all of its great strength that cannot save. And so the the message is that God looking down from heaven is all-powerful, that mankind um, imagines that they can rebel against God and and succeed, but it is just purely a, a vapor. The psalmist goes on to remind us the Lord protects those who love and serve him. Verse 18 But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in times of famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. And then we close with a very brief uh, prayer uh, for God's help in giving us hope and love and for his love to be with us. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And so, Lord, after having read this psalm, we we agree with this last line especially. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord. And, Lord, we do put our hope in you. We also ask, Lord, that your eyes would be on us as your people who fear you. Lord, deliver us from death. And keep us alive in times of famine. Lord, be our help and our shield. Lord, be in our hearts and help us to rejoice and trust in you. All the days of this life and all the days of eternity to come, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.